vital functions of the United States government is to establish and maintain diplomatic relations with other countries. In every friendly and civilized nation in the world, there is an American embassy or legation. Whether it is Paris or Cairo, Shanghai or any other remote outpost, the most reliable and confidential means of communication is the courier service. Armed only with his passport, the courier, like a global postman, delivers the top secret dispatches of our government. Hospital. Norman. Stephen McQuinn. Profession. Diplomatic courier. which best describes 99% of a diplomatic courier's assignments. You're handed a transportation voucher and told to proceed to Paris or New Delhi or Melbourne or any one of the hundreds of U.S. diplomatic posts scattered over the globe. But once in a rare while, the assignment is so hush-hush that even the courier isn't told his final destination until he's well on his way. 5,000 feet. What'd you say? They told me to take you up to 5,000 feet, McGuinn. Well, here we are. Now where do we go? I don't know. Our destination's in here. Your State Department guy's a real misterioso. Key to my pouch. Oh, what does the letter say? Proceed to Todos Santos, Baja California. Todos Santos? Deliver contents of pouch into hands of Dr. Ina... Dr. Ina Teplon. Proceed with utmost speed. I don't get it. Why didn't your people send you by commercial airlines? There's a daily flight from Tijuana to La Paz. From La Paz, it's so uh, 75 to 80 miles by car to Toto Santos. Roads are probably rotten, take you a day or so longer. But it would sure save the taxpayers a bundle of dough. Unless your time's a lot more valuable than I think. Not my time, Lieutenant. Nikolai Teplov's. Teplov? You mean the relativity guy? Yeah, the old genius himself. He escaped from the Iron Curtain. I guess he and his daughter, Dr. Ina, have been living in Todos Santos. Every commie agent in the world looking for him, and he's hiding right in our own backyard. Looks like he's through hiding. What's that, it lead? The box is lead. I don't get it. Well, Dr. Teploff was very ill when he and his daughter escaped to the West. Cancer. Oh, sure, I know now. They use radioactive material for treating cancer. Radiotherapy, they call it. He must be pretty far gone if he can't be moved to a hospital for treatment. Every day is important. His work is invaluable. I hear it means pay dirt to our side. If you follow me. I follow you, McGuinn. Right to Toto Santos. We have just come from the beach. The plane is not there. See, si, I know. But has there been some delay? Uh, momentito. Go inside, put yourself in the custody of Octavio. <laughs> Since the jail burned down, the prisoners are always around the feet. Haven't you got any instructions about the plane? See, si. last night, the Secretario de Governacional personally himself called for Mexico City. He said an Americano plane will come from San Diego and bring medicine for your patient. Yes. But I think the plane will come manana. Today will come a hurricane. A hurricane? See. Si. There's been no storm warnings on the radio. It will come in one hour. There's not a cloud in the sky. Maybe less. 
If your superiors called you about it, why wasn't I informed? Senora Doctor, since this morning the telephone is not working. I think the secretary of the governor himself personally does not know of this hurricane or anyone else in Realidad. How do you know a hurricane is coming? Tobacco does not burn. The paper is heavy with dampness. And besides, these old bones now. Senor Padilla, will you please call Mexico City and find out exactly when the plane will arrive this afternoon? You do not believe what the secret warns, Senora? Will you please call? I think it is working again. How much further? Well, we're about here. We're a little behind schedule, bucking headwinds. But we should be letting down a couple of hours. With respect, Senor Secretario, a hurricane is coming. Hello? Uh, hello? Senor Secretario? Uh, Televanista? Hello? Hello? Line is dead. Galoska, those two Americanos, I find where they are living. Uh, later, Alvaro, I'm busy. But they have broken into a fishing cabin on the peninsula. Later, later, I'm busy, Alvaro. I will go arrest them. You will go to the churchyard and ring the bell for the hurricane warning. But the sky is without a cloud. Pronto. But the Americanos. The Americanos will not run far in a hurricane. Who are these Americans? Do not worry, senor doctor. Uh, they have nothing to do with your patient. They are not politicos. Uh, the man is only wanted for murder in these states. You uh, see? This morning I have received this bulletin. You didn't tell me, Uncle Oscar. Why should I tell you everything? All of my nephews make good deputados. Only this one. Like a young rooster, he, 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 he burns with ambition. I will go ring the bell. Senora doctor, if you want to get back to your patient, you better go now. Uh, what if the plane comes? Oh. We'll come manana, senora. I don't think you understand. My father is dying. He needs a special radiotherapy treatment. That's the reason the American government is sending down a plane. Every hour is vital. Uh, rest your mind, senora. I will go to the beach myself. And if the plane comes, I will personally rush the medicine back to you. Now, now go pronto. Four. This is Nan Zebra Yoke on Operations Radio San Diego. This is Nan Zebra Yoke. This is Amphib 4. Amphib 4. Come in, Operations. I have an urgent weather briefing for you, Amphib 4. Heavy obscuration. Ceiling zero. Visibility zero. Severe squalls followed by hurricane winds. Front moving southeast approximately 135 degrees at 60 knots. Over. How does the weather look ahead? Clear. Can you make it? I've got to. I can't turn back. Keep us posted, Lieutenant. Good luck. Thanks. This is Amphib 4. Over. What does it mean? It means that a hurricane has closed in on us from an angle behind. Look down below. We're in the squalls now. I hope we can beat the big wind to Toto Santos. I don't know. Why didn't they warn us about this before? They probably just got the news from some ship at sea. An awful lot of ocean out there for a hurricane to hide in. I like it. 
It's ground from that Mexican farmer up the road. Corn. See if you can make it taste like a fillet. I'm hungry. Well, what's the matter with you? There was someone snooping around here while you were gone. I think it was a police deputy. Good figures. Well, aren't we going to make a run for it? They won't be coming after us tonight, baby. You hear that church bell? That's a hurricane warning. We'll clear out the minute it lets up. We'll go to La Paz. And then what? How do I know? Yeah, for once in your life, why don't you face reality? We're at the end of our road. We're nearly out of money, and we can't run any further. I told you before, Cora. Quit harping on me. I got no intention of giving myself up. You could plead self-defense. The worst you would get would be manslaughter. And then you'd be rid of me for five or ten years, huh? If I really wanted to get rid of you, I'd walk out that door right now. Well, why don't you? I can't. I love you. I'm fit for the Nancy Brioke. I'm fit for the Nancy Brioke. Do you read me, Operation? Do you read me? Over. Come in, Amphib 4. Come in, Amphib 4. I can't raise him. Our radio must be knocked out. Any idea where we are? Circling Toto Santos, I think. Better say a prayer that it clears up soon. Now, nothing. This is Nan Zebra Yoke. Operations calling Amphib 4. Matt, do you hear that? Sounds like an airplane. Plane. This weather will be silly. That's it, McQuinn. Hang on, I'm going to try to set her down. It's out of control. just beyond that road. Matt, someone may be injured or dying. Forget it, Cora. You're not an army nurse anymore. We can't turn our backs on a thing like this. Look, Cora, start packing. There'll be a search party looking for that plane. We're going to be long gone before they get here. It may be hours before anyone finds that wreckage. Well, what do you want me to do? Stick my head in a noose just because a plane happens to fall in our front yard? I want you to act like a human being. Matt, let's see if anyone's alive, and then we'll decide what to do. Looks like a Navy plane. 
pilot's alive. He's badly hurt. We can't move him. Do you see anyone else? Must have been flying solo. I wonder what he was doing so far south. He needs a doctor. We've got to phone for help. Are you crazy? We can't leave him like this. Well, a search party will find him. It may take hours. Well, the better for us. Come on, let's get out of here. We can't let him die. Come on, I said. Well, we've got to leave anyway. Why not phone for help? We can still be miles away before the authorities get here. Uh. Matt, let's just do this one decent thing. Oh, Pack our things and phone. I'll wait here. I'll wait here until you get back and bring blankets. Stand by for an emergency announcement. A United States Navy plane is believed to be out of a fuel in the Todos Santos area. The plane is an emergency mission carrying two gold radon capsules for a dying man. If you have any information regarding this aircraft, contact the jefe de la policía, Todos Santos. Presten atención para una importante noticia. Se cree que un aeroplano de la Marina de los Estados Unidos se cayó en la zona de Todos Santos. El aeroplano es en especial misión y carga cápsulas de radion para una persona moribunda, para... Did you phone? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll cover him. Go on and get the car started. We gotta hurry. Matt. Go on. The place will be swarming with cops in a few minutes. Merciful mother, look! Get back to Teplov, pronto! I must have been thrown clear. When I came to, I walked back to the wreckage. Somebody flashed a light in my eyes and then clubbed me. How's the lieutenant? He'll recover. And your father? Where are the capsules? Senor McQueen, we have searched the wreckage. This is all we could find. Do you think it was whoever hit you? I don't know. Let's take a look. Uncle Oscar, footprints, footsteps, look, footprints, look, here they are, here. A man and a woman's. Stop, senor. I hope that's not what I think. It is, senor. Piedre Ponsonia. Uh, this certainly isn't my day. Uncle Oscar, Uncle Oscar. What is now? Uncle Oscar. 
Stupid, I thought I told you to watch my police station. See, but on the telephone, a man, he doesn't say who he is. Only that he has medicine a capsule for which he demands $10,000. He just called. Call from where? La Paz. The doctor is to bring the money to the Club de Pesca. When? Tonight. He says if he see any policia, he will throw the capsule into the sea. Senor Padilla, you must recover that medicine. There's very little time. I will go to La Paz myself. I will handle this extortioner. No, we can't take a chance. We're obviously dealing with desperate people. Can you raise the money? No. Senor Padilla? I could call the secretary of the Governor National, but there would be much red tape. I do not think this could be arranged by tonight. Then I'll have to go without the money. You, senor? Alone, Padilla. Maybe I can strike a bargain with what's at hand. Set to go, baby. Not a bad swap. Our car for that old bucket. She leaks in every scene, but she'll take us a long way from here. Matt, this is stupid. We haven't a chance of escaping with this money. The doctor ought to be here any minute. Matt, you'll go the rest of the way by yourself. I'm leaving. You can't run out of me now. Look, baby, I did this for you. So we could have money. Good life together. Listen, I heard of a little place... Matt, let I'm... me go! Cora, please. I can't stop now. I'm in too deep. Here, take this. Cover me from over there. Well, take it! I thought you said you loved me. I did. That's my baby. That's far enough. All right, mister, hand over the money. My name is McQuinn. We've met before, remember? Yeah, it's me. Where's the money? Couldn't raise it. Trying to be funny, mister? Not when a man's dying. I came to get those capsules. I guess you know you're a dead man. Well, that's the chance I had to take. Go ahead, shoot. At least I know you'll be joining me. Where I'm going, they'll never find me. They won't bother to look for you. Huh? Your sentence has already been executed. Look at your hands. Blistered. Third degree burns. The deepest kind. What are you talking about? Radiation burns. Overexposure to those radon capsules. Didn't you read the label on the box? Danger, radioactive material. Tied him in a lead handkerchief, at least an inch thick. You may still have a chance if you get treatment quickly. And if I don't? You die, slowly, in agony. How do I know you're telling me the truth? You don't. Go ahead, shoot. Then see if you can run away from those burns. They're only irritating now. Later, you'll feel like your bones are dissolving. But I can't surrender. They want me in the States for murder. That's quite a dilemma. You'll have to sort it out by yourself. The man's dying. I've got to deliver these capsules. Matt, don't. Mr. Wait! Leg is snappy, fella. I haven't got time to argue. Maybe I can cop a plea for manslaughter in the States. But what about that pilot? He's all right. You gotta give me proof. The man's dying. There's no time for proof. Stop! Stop!
Lucky for him, you're a bad shot. I don't think it's serious. I'm an excellent shot, Mr. McQuinn. You've got a nerve telling him that rash was caused by radiation burns. You knew? I used to be an army nurse. I know a poison oak rash when I see one. It would take days of exposure to those capsules to produce such critical burns. Thanks for playing along. I didn't do it for you. I did it for him. Mr. McQuinn, thank you. You're, you're bravery. Well, you saved my father's life. This is the first time I've seen a maldito captured by Yedre Ponsonia. <laughs> How you call it? Poison oak. <laughs> <laughs>